What are House Republicans doing with their power? Are they fighting inflation? Are they trying to build more jobs in America? Or are they doing something they used to actually accuse a lot of other people of, which is being obsessed with the past and something that really you don't want to see your own government do, which is support people accused of trespassing or attacking the police or, in some cases, sedition. They are now opening an inquiry into what they call the alleged mistreatment of people who are defendants in January 6th cases in a D.C. jail, a kind of a newfound discovery of inmates' rights. Republicans on the Oversight Committee are also planning an actual delegation to visit the jail and demand answers from local officials. Now, before we go any further, let me tell you, if there is genuine concern about the treatment of human beings in government facilities, be they defendants, convicts, immigrants, that is obviously part of the government's job, to do that oversight and to have basically humane treatment of citizens or any other individuals under the control of the government. But having been as fair as possible, I could tell you, none of the evidence here suggests that this is about that. Rather, it's a Republican effort to use this sort of theater and this sort of idea about mistreatment as a way to embrace people accused, in some cases, and convicted in others, of attacking the government, of attacking the police, of trespassing, and worse, on January 6th. Uh, MTG is a part of this. She's already visited one of these jails, so this builds on sort of her early foray, and she compared the rioters who were being held there to political prisoners of war. As a legal matter, that is false. Now, Green's also co-opting what we have discussed here, that there are valid criticisms and ways to try to make sure that people are treated humanely, whatever they're accused of. This D.C. jail has actually been under scrutiny for its conditions, but we didn't see this type of concern or these kind of visits from these same officials around any other set of cases. Indeed, there are reports that a disproportionate share of people held there are people of color. Now, the widespread attention on the jail is obviously one of these moments that sort of shows the cosplay, the trolling, the effort to get everyone upset about this is probably part of the method. And yet, on the other hand, if you have people in your government who are trying to directly or indirectly, literally or symbolically embrace the people accused of overthrowing your government, well, that's something you need to keep an eye on. And we're going to do that right now with a shrewd and special guest on a special day. You know what it is. We call it Che Day, where this cartoon comes to life in the visage of political strategist Che Komenduri, a veteran of several campaigns, including the Obama campaign. How you doing? Good. How are you? I'm great, Che. Um, human or cartoon? It's a it's a choice we make every time, but we keep choosing you after we show the cartoon. Uh, I I like that. Yeah, I we. Like I prefer that. the human version of myself to the cartoon because <laughs> respect. You know, I, I get to sleep and eat. And yeah. Eat no, and you yeah. live here in this world, not right. just in the metaverse. Um, exactly. I mentioned all of that. I almost cleared the brush for you. You're right. The most important part seems to be uh, that this is now not the entire Republican Party, but a key part of its elected leadership embracing exactly. uh, January 6th. That wasn't where we were on January 7th. What do you see here? What I see is January 6th is turning into a founding myth of MAGA. Mm. If you think about it, the, the movie Joker shows a transgressive act of violence and it's celebrated uh, by a group of outcasts and followers who then use it and use the leader, the person who did the violence, as a hero. And they, they sort of create a, make this like sort of a founding myth that this act of violence was justified, that it said something very important. That is exactly what is happening here. This is not the, this is not the behavior of a political party or even a political movement. This is the behavior of a cult. This is how mm. cults behave. This is how cult, what cults do. They create lies, they create myths, and they force others to agree with them on that. All right, it's Friday. How deep do you want to get? I can go very deep. I'll go deep with you. Yeah. I'm a little tired. It's been a week. <laughs> but you're speaking to something that goes to the profound sense of the legitimacy right. of force in modern civilization. Exactly. Which is the military and the police properly overseen are allowed to use force in the way the rest of us are not. That's sort of a canon of society in the Western legal system. Right. And you're sh showing to people that what we have here inside the government is support for an effort to misuse power or abuse power to legitimize 
violence and try to associate it with with force. And that, if that builds over time, um, that would seem to be something that is more dangerous than any particular political leader because those leaders come and go. But if this is part of right-wing authoritarianism in the U.S., then, then we have an ongoing democracy problem. If we do. And it's just, this is where we've always been sort of headed with Trump. Trump always introduced himself, and if you remember his inauguration in 2017, I alone can fix it. I alone am the answer. The way democracies are set up is you have a political leadership, you have institutions, the courts, the military, a free press, that come between the leader and the people. Trump has always presented himself as the leader, and then there are the people who must follow him. So the idea that anything can be sort of a check on his power or um, in any way mitigate his power has always been, must be sort of eliminated. So he has never seen that distinction that you have just laid out in a democracy, that we have a military that does not serve a particular personality or leader, mm -hmm. but actually serves the American people in a constitutional order. That is simply not part of the MAGA movement. And you can see it in the celebration of January 6th. Hmm. Yeah, it's really striking. When I listen to you, and I think about all this, where this stuff is headed, right. I'm short-term pessimistic, but I'm long-term pessimistic. I'm actually much more optimistic. Are I mean, you? You have to remember, like, in November of this year, of, la of last year, uh, the American people said no to the red wave. Okay. They said no to MAGA. And you see this all over the world. Uh, the Brazilians said no to Bolsonaro. Uh, mm -hmm. The French said no to Le Pen. Um, everything... The science, both around the world and in the U.S., is towards a rejection of this. And all you have to do is look at the young people in this country, Gen Z, the millennials. They have voted overwhelmingly and consistently against MAGA. MAGA is not gaining hmm. new supporters. Look at that. It is just sort of, you know, sort of making the old supporters yeah. more glued together. I